It was three nights until the new year, and in the mountains north of Mazik Rimon, Naftali Kreskis was lying on the ground beside two old women and a Mazik who was mostly dead. The autumn air left the four of them chilled, but not too chilled to sleep or dream. Naftali was there entirely by accident. He was supposed to be in Prihadar. They were all meant to be in Prihadar, but Asmel, the lord of books, had made a mistake. Only days before he'd been forced to remove his own magic, an act which had left him weakened and with a failing memory. So when he'd opened the gate of Luz, he'd accidentally sent Naftali and his companions not to the great city of the east, but only a few miles away from his own Alcala in Rimon. They'd been facing death in the Alcala. Here in the mountains, they were not much safer. It was worse even than that. Naftali's near-dead mazik, Barcelé Bedroer, lately Naftali's beloved and the heir of Luce, had lost an arm and nearly bled to death on the pine-littered ground. This was why they'd stayed the past few nights in the mountains instead of fleeing north immediately. Elena, the younger of the old women, and in Naftali's estimation, the cleverer, had stated rather emphatically that Barcelé, no matter his objections, could not be moved without killing him. They'd managed to gather a little food and enough water to keep them alive. They'd slept, and Naftali had scouted the area a bit. They'd discussed moving Barcelé farther down the mountain, where there would be easier access to water, but Barcelé had grown feverish. It wasn't until late that night that his fever had broken on its own, and at that point Elena convinced the two men and their elder woman companion to sleep a few hours, to marshal at least a little strength, so that they might discuss moving Barcelé in the morning. Whether Elena herself slept or not, Naftali was not sure. But as he rested, his dreaming mind found itself called back into the city of Rimon, back to the garden of the king in the shared dream world of the Maziks. Only it was no longer the king's garden, Naftali recalled, as he opened his eyes to the same courtyard he'd seen the night of the crown prince's oath-getting many weeks before. The king was dead, and his oldest son was also dead, so Naftali assumed this must be a ceremony for the king's younger son, whose name he had never learned—